Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from WX Risk here in Central Virginia. You're a captain of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your commander of catastrophe. Well, maybe. We'll see. Uh, hopefully, looking for some winter weather, maybe. People are getting desperate out there. So let's get right to it and take a look and see what's going on for this week in weather. Uh, <clears throat> first, we'll start out here taking a look at my smiling face from Richmond, Virginia. And there you can see the Twitter page. Be sure to follow me right there if you want to. And then also the Facebook page. And those are my two emails. So, uh, of course, feel free to uh, drop me a line anytime you want to. Okay, well, let's get started. Our topics here are going to be, of course... Uh, the potential event for a winter storm on January 25-26 for a good portion of the Middle Atlantic region, perhaps southern New England, perhaps the Ohio Valley, and then another one on January 28-29, and then looking at the beginning of February and see what's going on here. So this is what we saw last week. And uh, with this is now, the last update I did was January 12th, so about eight days ago. Now this is what the upper air pattern was looking like on these weather models here. From the GFS, this is valid for uh, the evening of the January 21st, which would be tomorrow. And, uh, I, you know, the models were in pretty good agreement about what was going to happen here. And you could see that uh, they were essentially, let me get my marker out here, we could see the block here over Greenland uh, trying, you know, building very nicely, which it did. And um, it pushing up into the Greenland area. Uh, in this area here. Oh, my mark is not coming up for some reason. There we go. And uh, there we uh, coming up here into Greenland. And then the uh, Pacific Ridge building up into Alaska. And we were end up getting this linkage of the two what features, which would force the polar vortex to come southward. And this and this matter and also drive the cold air southward. So uh, it's not what you call a classic winter storm pattern. You're not getting a big ridge in Western Canada, and you're not getting a trough in the eastern United States. But when you have a moderate La Nina, we talked about this last week, this is one of the few ways you can get a good stormy winter pattern setting up for uh, portions of the central and eastern U.S. because the polar vortex is forced southward, and the cold air gets pushed southward across a broad area so you don't look at a plunge of massive arctic air coming southward but instead a steady slow advancement of the cold air coming southward from along the u.s canada border from say montana to maine uh, pushing southward you know each day a little bit so that's what the uh, model data was showing and of course it would set up a you know a pattern a surface pattern look like this this is for thursday and you know this is the projection from january 12th valid for January 21 on the left hand side and then for 23rd beyond that so you could see with the models were showing very nice cold air coming south with big arctic high pushing southward driving the cold air further into the country finally at a sustained broad area notice here we're not seeing any of these big arctic fronts coming southward instead you know slow push of the cold air southward from north to south that sort of thing so that's what the models were hinting at here and we could see the you know the precipitation showing up here this is valid for january 21 a lot of precipitation 22nd over the deep south states along the cold front and then trying to push that moisture northward uh, along the front into the cold air on the 26th 27th here's the cold air advancing and again <clears throat> you can see you know the uh the light blue and the light green for example this is the uh, 0850 line. So that's your rain snow line one mile above the ground here. And you can see it's right through central Virginia, then into southern Kentucky. Here's a really deep cold air here, you know, minus 24 here, minus 20 like that. And you can see by January 27th, this is much larger. And you can see that this green uh, blue line is now down in Georgia, south of Atlanta. And the cold air is pushed deeper into Virginia and Iowa and Illinois and into New England. Again, not a plunge of cold air, just a broad general advance of the cold air. That's what the models were showing here. So <clears throat> let's take a look and see how that's whether the data, you know, we're getting close to the January 22nd, January 25. Let's see what's going on here. So we'll take a look at our teleconnections first. And again, this is if you like, if you'd fo our focus here is on winter storms for the eastern U.S., specifically the east coast. So this is the ideal pattern you want 
for a significant east coast snowstorm which would be the sex or a mex which is major east coast snowstorm or a hex which is a historic east coast snowstorm on the pacific side we want to see the negative epo and then positive pna so this would be our pacific equations here and then the atlantic equations would be of course the negative arctic oscillation and the negative nao here and of course you also want to see your 50 50 low uh, which would be, I guess, that's. let me change my marker here. Um, this would be here, the 50-50 low in that area. So that's ideally what you want to see. So if we take a look at our teleconnections here and see what the trend is, well, sure enough, the uh, Arctic Oscillation looks to be in pretty good shape um, here. You can see it's very strongly negative. Here you are right now, January 20th. And notice all the forecast models. You can see the models up here, the European, the high resolution mean European, the GFS, the operational GFS, the, Cane the, Cana the Korean, and the Canadian. They all keep it strongly negative right through the first beginning of February. So that's really good. And then uh, this here is the NAO. And there we are right now. And again, for the most part, it's pretty negative. Uh, right through the beginning of February. Okay, well, the, so far, so good. That's what we want to see. We have the Atlantic side of it so far. But if we look at the Pacific side of things, it's not that great. And this is where the La Nina really becomes a problem. So the top one there is the PNA pattern. And we can see that the PNA is right here. And it goes negative. It's, it was slightly positive, and then it stays negative all the way through. And then comes up towards neutral a little bit towards the end, maybe uh, beginning of February. Now the EPO uh, is, as you can see right now, it is negative right there. You see that? But then look what happens as we go into January 25, 26. It becomes kind of neutral, and then it has a tendency going a little positive. And that's not what you really want to see here. So we have a little bit of a window, but not a lot. Um, and to show you why this is important, this here is your PNA pattern. So when your PNA is positive, we can see the cold air coming southward like this. There's your original west coast, but pushes up into western Canada, drives the cold air southward. Okay, so you have your cold air in place and you have your storm track in place. But when the PNA is negative, you have a neg you have a trough here over the western United States, and it's cold and wet, stormy here. And then the jet stream goes from California, Arizona, up towards Chicago, the Great Lakes, and New England. And everybody south of that is relatively mild and dry. So that's what you don't want to see if you like winter storms. Now, with regard to the EPO, <clears throat> well, here we go. When the EPO is negative in the upper left right here, negative EPO, you're getting your ridge building into Alaska, and you get, look at this, says your cross-polar flow. I've talked about this before. So it's it's more than just a, 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 a positive PNA, which is what we're seeing here. The negative EPO establishes, in other words, it extends the ridge deeper into the Alaska and establishes your cross-polar flow. So it's an enhanced ridge when you have a negative EPO and a positive PNA. It becomes enhanced and you get much stronger cross-polar flow. But when the EPO is positive, like the data is showing now, what happens is you get a trough here and your cold air is, for the most part, the Arctic air is locked up more in Canada and you have more Pacific mild air overrunning the country, which is not good for snowstorms. So that's why, you know, seeing this development with the EPO down in February is not ideal. But again, we do have the, the, the Atlantic side, which is still looking pretty good. So what we're looking at really is a battle, as it has been, between the Pacific and the Atlantic. So this here is the current upper air map for January 20th. And we can see some important features here. So for example, here is our blocking pattern over Greenland, very noticeable here. And over here is our 50-50 low, very noticeable right there. And we have a bit of a ridge on the west coast of North America, which is OK. And uh, the EPO is kind of ex uh, uh, negative. The West Coast Ridge is positive. But you have this upper low here in California. So that's our current status. And again, if we look on the Pacific side, right now, again, currently, that matches. The EPO is slightly negative, And we do have um, the PNA is as positive going to neutral. So that kind of matches. But what happens is, over time, let's take a look at the uh, pattern for Friday. Now, we still have our block over Greenland, very strong Greenland block, negative NAO. We still have our 50-50 low in southeastern Canada. But the ridge is not on the west coast. It's in Alaska, uh, which is not really ideal. So 
uh, the EPO is kind of neutral here. And the other difference is that we have a big ridge here, excuse me, a big trough over the West Coast. You can clearly see that right there, the West Coast trough. So uh, normally when you have a trough on the West Coast, you want to see it usually causes a ridge here in the eastern United States. So your low pressure areas track through Kansas and to Iowa, Chicago, and then New England because it goes over the top of the ridge. But when you've got these features in place here, when you have your block and your 50-50 low, excuse me, the block and 50-50 low, this whole thing becomes massive and it keeps the trough energy coming out of the west coast trough more or less in a west to east direction so that's how it helps you getting that's the only way i said like i've said before you can get a, a winter pattern in a uh you know in a uh, in in a moderate la nina now what happens as we go beyond that this is now january 25 okay this is where this potential storm is but look what's happened here okay uh we have a massive trough which has developed over the west coast uh, tremendous rains, huge mountain snows coming in for California, the Cascades, the Sierra Nevadas, the ridges on the west and eastern Oregon, Washington State, into the Great Basin, and eventually the Rockies. This is, system is going to be a pretty big system for the West Coast. But what it does is it ejects the first low on the uh, that was uh, that's here. So. Uh, remember, we had that that low here over California. So that gets ejected here on and gets pushed into uh uh, Oklahoma and Kansas see that so uh, this feature comes down and ejects the one that was here eastward and that's what this is now we still have our 50 50 low in our block so these two features keep this low moving in a west to east direction that's what the I concern is for the winter storm the result is because look what that low is it's over Kansas excuse me Oklahoma and Arkansas that's pretty far to the south and as a result the surface low stays to the south and we get this now this was the european model from yesterday morning on january excuse me uh this was no this was this morning excuse me actually today january 20th the low stays fairly far to the south you can see that and now uh, and as a result you know, northern and central Virginia gets snow and ice going to snow, and so does Ohio, and so does Indiana. And now North Carolina is all rain. I'm sorry, they are. Hampton Roads is all rain. Tennessee is all rain. Um, but that's what this is showing. The track is fairly far to the south. And the result is you get that kind of snowfall map. Now, I think this is overdone. This is just, you know, not correct with regard to the snowfall amounts. Uh, it's got too much snow in Richmond. Um, but, uh, you know, that's what some of the models are showing. Now, this was, I think, this was the uh, a Tuesday 12Z GFS, which looked really scary. I mean, it's got 10 inches of snow in Richmond. It's got 12 to 14 in Charlottesville, out towards D.C. and North, Northern Virginia. It's a big snowstorm for these areas. But again, this was the early run. The, the updated version of the European from last night is a little different and we'll take a look at that in a second now this was the 12z GFS uh, excuse me this was in the 6z GFS for yesterday uh, that was Tuesday morning and you can see it's got no snow at all and the reason is because there's not enough cold air in so the low is at a fairly far south latitude but there's no cold air according to the GFS so big difference here, here the cold air is in place here the GFS does not have any now this was this early morning went uh, this morning Wednesday European the low is a little further to the north it's over Kentucky and as a result you can see you got more rain in the southern half of Virginia including Richmond all the snow and ice is to the north of Richmond Fredericksburg Charlottesville Lynchburg maybe and then heavy snow in DC and Culpeper the northern Virginia Piedmont into southern Pennsylvania, Ohio, Maryland, Delaware, southern New Jersey, Philly, Baltimore, that sort of thing. And as a result, you get that. Notice, once you go south of, let's say, the northern neck, Fredericksburg, Charlottesville, you get a lot less snow. Some ice there, but no snow. All the big snows to the north in the cold air, as you can see. That's what the early morning Wednesday European this morning was showing, okay? So that's what it was showing. Now, the GFS from uh, 6z this morning uh just has rainstorm it's got a little bit of snow in northern virginia uh on june on june 20 uh, january june january 26 on tuesday but it's primarily uh, a rainstorm and it kind of falls apart it's not that big of an event uh it's you know very very different from the european and then um 
finally you can see that uh the uh early morning this is the 6z wednesday gfs does have some moderate snow in central and northern virginia not a big deal and the, like you said the system just falls apart i mean you can this is a weakening system from here to here then to this it's just a weakening system on the gfs so uh if we look at the gfs from midday here uh this is the 12z run so uh, again let me put, this is the 12z run here you can see it so this is the afternoon wednesday run notice where the high is the high is there that's in northern well well central manitoba uh that is too far to the north for a mid-atlantic snowstorm the high is not close enough it's not bad for new england or for northern pennsylvania new york ohio valley but for um Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, West Virginia, North Carolina, Kentucky. It's too far to the north. The high has got to be closer to the Great Lakes, and that's one of the problems. So as a result, the cold air is not in place. And eventually what happens is, um, you know, the low moves off the coast. It doesn't do anything. And in fact, the afternoon GFS actually kills the whole system. It just falls apart. It goes from there to this. It goes, slides off the coast. It doesn't do much of anything. So there's the GFS doing that again for you. Now here's the European. This is the afternoon European. And again, I'll point out this is the latest run. This is Wednesday afternoon right here. Okay. And you can see what's happening. Now the, remember the upper low before was over Arkansas. See that? Look where the upper low is now. Can you see that? It's over Iowa. That's a big, big difference. And that means that the surface low is going to be further to the north on the new European. So uh, that's one of the changes on the European. The result is we get a track like this. See, the low is, is over central Illinois, Indiana. So let's compare this map to the previous run, which had the low there. You see the difference? So this was early this Wednesday morning. The, okay, the, the short wave is in Oklahoma, and the surface low is there in Kansas and Arkansas and Oklahoma. And this is the afternoon run. It's over Iowa. Huge difference. That's just, you know, and as a result, you end up getting that. This is all, I mean, you get a little bit of snow in D.C., northern Virginia, but mostly rain event for everybody south of the D.C., and then you get, it goes over to ice, and all the snow is in the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley's all rain, it's in Pennsylvania, New York, and potentially southern New England. So, you know, there you go. Um, now, <clears throat> and then the, uh, now beyond that event, there's a couple more coming down the pike, and what happens is you can see this is the 6Z GFS. It has a low off the coast on January 28th. The 12Z run in the bottom right here, you can see it's got this big system here, a nice snowstorm for North Carolina and Virginia, if that's true, and that's also showing up on the European here beyond. This is the 28th and the 29th. And notice here that the cold high is much further to the east. It's over the northern Great Lakes, which is ideal. And as a result, the surface low has to track much further to the south, and you get a coastal development here. So this is the potential for the 28th or the 29th event. And like I said, it even shows up on the Euro The GFA even has something February 1st. Uh, so we'll see if that happens. So in summary here, let's go over the fine points here first. Okay, January 25, 26 does not seem to be a true ideal mid-Atlantic snowstorm based upon the current data. The cold high is not nearly close enough uh, to match the ideal textbook position of the mid-Atlantic or uh, significant East Coast snowstorm, the, what we call a sex event. There's just no sex in the mid-Atlantic. That just doesn't look that way. Um, now, the cold high position is okay for northern Pennsylvania, New York State, and New England. So there's that. What we're looking at here is again is a Pacific versus Atlantic pattern fight. The massive West Coast trough wants to pop a ridge in the jet stream over the southeast US like it always does. But the negative NAO Greenland block and the 50-50 low is trying to suppress that ridge and that would force the surface low to stay to the south. So if the NAO 50-50 low uh, winds, then the surface low is going to be pushed further to the south. The upper level energy will be stepped further to the south, and it we might see the track shift further to the south again. So this solution might not be correct. It might go further back to what we saw um, here. So we'll see. We we don't know that yet, but so that is a possibility. This is not set in stone. So we're going to have to wait and see. Well, who's going to win, the Pacific side or the Atlantic side? you know that's going to determine everything now with regard to 28 29 at this point it seems to be a true mid-atlantic snowstorm may it seems to be at this point in time and the model reliability here again because the model la nina is awful so don't get too excited yet the cold high will you know 
likely to be in place as an ideal text position for a mid-Atlantic significant East Coast snowstorm, even a major one. But the January 28th, 29th event is set up by the January 26th event. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens on the 26th and whether it moves off into the northwest Atlantic and then back up into southeastern Canada and reinforces the 50-50 low. So we will not know about January 28, 29 until after January 26. That's just the way things work out. It does appear that the atmosphere for the mid-Atlantic is going to be much, much colder on the event for 28, 29 than it is on January 25, 26. That's what the data says, but that's what the data says right now. We don't know that yet. And again, the model reliability is not great at this point. Anyway, that's the summer of the event. Um, we'll look and see if the January 25, 26 event shifts back to the south. It's possible, but I'm more focused. I think the second event, 28, 29, is a little better for folks living in Maryland, Delaware, Virginia, northern North Carolina, West Virginia. And the 25, 26 appears to be more like a Pennsylvania, Ohio, uh, Northern Ohio, New York State, New England type of event. So we'll see. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll see you over on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page.